Welcome back to another game log vlog where we don't just collect a lot of games, we play and beat a lot of games. At the minute we're playing through all the Ratchet and Clank games and we're in a bit of a rough time because at the minute we're at the spin-off phase where I don't know what's really going on. Yesterday we played All for One and I think that was my least favourite so far but apparently Q Force is even worse and Q Force is update, uh, up for today and I'm really not holding out much hope. But according to how long to beat this is only half as long as All for One which means if it is bad it'll last half the time so that's okay. I can deal with that because it means that I won't have to go to bed at 5 o'clock in the morning like I did yesterday. Let's get it started, shall we? Other than that, the only thing on the agenda is going to the gym. No TV to watch today. Time for us to begin what is apparently one of the worst Ratchet & Clank games. It can't be worse than All For One. It just can't. When I search Ratchet & Clank Q-Force full game, I'm seeing like 3 to 5 hours max for the playthrough. Whereas All For One, I was seeing like 8 to 10 and it took me about that amount of time yesterday. There's no way that this can be as bad as that, especially when it is less than half as long. I refuse to believe it. I know that there's some sort of tower defense mechanic in this that isn't present in any of the other ones, but it, honestly, it sounds like I'd rather have the tower defense stuff than what we had in um, the last game, because Assassin's Creed Revelations had tower defense missions, and I didn't hate those. So, like, I'm hoping I'm not going to hate this too much. He, he, this is this is the last one before we move back to the mainline entries of the franchise too. After this one we've got Ratchet and Clank in, into the Nexus, then we've got the Ratchet and Clank remake for the PlayStation 4, and then Ratchet and Clank A Rift Apart on the PlayStation 5. So, oh no, we've got one more PlayStation 3 one. I was about to say this is the last PlayStation 3 one, whereas literally all of them so far except for one have been played on PS3. But no, one more after this. Anyway, let's begin. Okay, so straight away, Q-Force is playing like the original Ratchet games did, or all of them, but, you know, all for one, so that bodes well. Can we throw... Why can't we throw the thing? Why can't we throw the thing? That's strange. Okay. Tutorializing things anyway. Can't change weapons yet either. Can still do that. L1 plus square is now throw. We've changed the buttons. Well, how many times have I said about how it's weird when franchises change controls that have been in the game since literally the first game? Like, why is it now on L1 and Square? It's been on R2 and Square the whole time. What's this? No, what is this? Return to the bridge for an urgent transmission. Promotion station. What? I don't know what this game's about. I refuse to believe that it's as bad. Oh, that's cool. Okay, we can get around faster. <laughs> Watch me run checkpoint to checkpoint to get through this game fast as I can. So that I can get back to the real ones. Okay, so the mechanics of this game are we have a base and the enemies are trying to get to it and we can purchase things to protect it. Which seems weird. And I'm out of ammo. That didn't take long at all, did it? I bet the game gives you very limited ammo because it wants you to engage more with the... Uh, tower defense aspects, buying turrets and stuff to protect your bases rather than you doing it yourself. Controls are very different, the sprint button's gone, which to be fair was only present in one game anyway, but now we can't fire with circle at all, whereas most of these games firing has been with circle, we're back to firing with R1. There's probably a setting to change that, but you know, not too fussed either way, I can adapt. Um, what weapon have we got in this pod? Weird that they're giving us weapons in pods now. Versus just, you know, buying them. Alright, what do we get? Oh, we can pick. So we've got the Doppelbanger, which is a very strange name, like some sort of swinging party. Cryo Shot, which was awful in the last game. And the Pyroblaster, which was also awful in that last game. Great. Pyroblaster it is then, because not one of those is a fun weapon. We can teleport to base. I wonder... What's the fastest way to get these missions done? Because that's what I'm going to do. My tiredness being solved by my Protein X Jimmy's Iced Coffee. Protein coffee with uh, my protein toffee flavoured uh, flavour drops in to make it toffee flavoured. If you use my protein, if you go to the gym at all, if you're trying to lose weight, any such sort of thing, do use code KALE because it keeps me in a job. And uh, yeah, send me screenshots of any orders you make over on Instagram because they send me a 200 good voucher to give to one of you that does. 
So I can see why people say that this game is boring because I feel like this is just this is just it now. There's these generators, you've got to defend the generators, that's every single mission. Um, in between getting the generators, try and block the enemy generators. Use your points to, to, to buy turrets and stuff. My gun is already maxed out and this is level 2, I don't know how many levels there are. I, I feel like that's really strange. Um, use the boots to get around quicker. It's, it's not exactly being a struggle yet. It's more fun than all for one, that's for damn sure. But like, again, that colonoscopy I had like five years ago was more fun than more fun than all for one. Hello, a boss. Oh, well, it's got a health bar. And I'm out of ammo. And now I'm not. Just spam turrets everywhere. Tower defense games are always so simple. Just spam something that deals DPS. Spam lots of things that do DPS to win. Cool. Heal up. Get some ammo. Can we go after the the keynote now, please? Those mines seem like a waste of money. The boxes matter the most I think they've ever mattered in this. Because they give you so many more um so many more bolts than like actually beating enemies does. Okay, now this is starting to get on my nerves. Why isn't this door opening? Give me reason to open door. Give me method. Out my face. You know, now I see why nobody likes this game. It's just boring, it's just long-winded. Like, it isn't long itself, like this is the fourth of five missions. But like, this is taking longer than it should because it's just fucking hard. Like, you can tell these games are not de designed for one person because I'm pretty sure this is another co-op one. And trying to protect all five things when these things are just in such high quantities. All the turrets are crap, but they all go down in a split second. I can't possibly defend all of these things on my fucking own. Like, good lord, get me to the next Ratchet game, because this, this era of Ratchet was dark and boring. Like, you can tell that the B team, the C team, like, the absolute losers were, were the ones that were making these games. Like, the real, the real people were there going, Roy, in six years' time, we need to make Spider-Man. That's what they were doing. Like, right now we're down to four generators. There's a boss there. There's all of these guys. I have barely got enough. I could buy one turret, but the turret will get... All right, let's buy a turret, right? I've got... Let's see what happens. Let's see how quick that turret's gone. Generator destroyed. Tried to repair it. Didn't work. We're about to go down. We've only got one left. That boss has got full health. We have got no chance. We're out of ammo. Ammo's back. And we've lost. What a pile of shit game. I, I can't believe how bad this game is. I can't believe that they made two. The I can't believe that in a row they made the worst two Ratchet & Clank games. All for One and Q-Force could very easily have ruined this franchise forever. Forever. Like, it's ridiculous. It's interesting how every time the checkpoint happens, by the way, this thing comes back with more health. It shouldn't exist in the first place, because look at this. We are an hour and 15 minutes into this mission. An hour and 15 when it says it's doable in 36. No, it ain't. Bullshit. After further research while I was failing before, right? I did a bit of a Google. Turns out what they did was they updated the game at one point as well to give you weapons more upgrade levels so that they get more damage to make it more possible. Which is interesting because I rejected that update when I started the game because I was like, what's the update going to do? Some online functionality? I don't care. But no, no, no. Apparently they recognised, oh, we made a bad game. Let's try and make it a bit better. Christ. It's interesting because in every list I've seen ranking the games in terms of... Um, whatever the word is, best to worst. I see a lot of people saying this is the worst. And I think that's so interesting. Buy another turret, not just going to make a difference. Rockets, jump around, spam the rockets. Not just going to do anything, because as soon as this guy goes down, there's going to be more. The only saving grace of this is that every time I go down, the thing seems to come back with a little bit more residual health. But look at this, here's more fellas. I'm about to go down. It's about to go down. We've all failed. This game's so shite. I'm so sick of shit games. And we failed. Lovely stuff. What a crap game. Okay, now that mission is finally over. There's one mission left. I'm going to the gym first though, because it's half past five. Then come back. It'll probably be dinner time. Finish this game off. Because, what, another hour and a half maybe? And then we'll definitely start. And, well, let's not try and beat Nexus today, because I don't want to go to bed as late as I did yesterday. But... Get through most of Nexus. Level 5 of the second worst Ratchet & Clank game. Now the good thing is I've done the update that gave us more weapon levels. 
So hopefully, hang on. Oh yeah, I forget you don't start with any weapons because this game is weird. Um, so hopefully now, hello? Right, let's just do the thing that gets us a weapon, shall we? Or not, because we're being attacked. Okay, hang on then. Wait, they didn't... Try again. Basically, the developers were like, yeah, we hear the balance problems. What we'll do is we'll fix it by giving you more weapons. So now when I use... But the thing is, I want to use the buzz blades. We'll, we'll stick with the combustor, because apparently it'll get a level 4 straight away, right? Yeah, it went straight to level 5. So it should be way better now. We should have less problems. Okay. Still would have liked to try the buzz blades out, but it's one or the other by the look of it. Which, this late in the game, using a level 1 gun wouldn't have been ideal. The main bad guy in this game is straight up Billy from Billy and Mandy. Hi, Billy. I miss Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I would pay any amount of money for like a release of it all on DVD. Literally, give me a complete box set of Fairly Odd Parents, Good Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Codename Kids Next Door, Ed, Ed and Eddie, Foster's Home for Imaginary Kids, all of that sort of thing, any of them, I'll pay any amount of money for any of them. That would be brilliant. He is straight up doing the Billy voice. He's a very prolific voice actor. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But this is the Billy voice, straight up. And that was the end of the second worst Ratchet and Clank game. Ratchet and Clank... I don't even know what this one was called. Q-Force. That was a very strange game. There was literally only four levels. and Well, there was five levels. The fifth level being basically a boss fight that was really easy, actually, compared to, like, every other final boss in the entire franchise. But... It's still pretty early, it's not even 9pm, which means we can get started with Ratchet & Clank Nexus today, and if that's a short enough game as well, which I think it might be, we might be able to beat that today as well, we'll see. But for now, let's get Ratchet & Clank, uh, what's it called, Q-Force, on the log. You know, I wonder why half of these games have got different names depending on what console or what country you're from, because I think All For One had a different name somewhere else, and Q-Force definitely has a different name somewhere else. I think Ratchet and Clank 2 has a different name as well, maybe? Alright, Ratchet and Clank... Q-Force... Deadlocked definitely has a different name, that's another one. Because that's it's either Deadlocked or Gladiator, depending on where you are from. And that's the 23rd of the 7th, 2023. Nice, nice and short game. It might have been abysmal, but at least it didn't overstay its welcome quite so bad like All For One did. Which brings us up to 10 Ratchet & Clank games beaten now since the 15th of, uh, of July. So 10 Ratchet & Clank games in 8 days. Not bad. It brings us up to 23 games total for July. So 23 days into July, 23 games beaten. Which also brings us up to 67 games for this year entirely so far. Nice. Let's go get started with Ratchet & Clank next, shall we? And if there's an update, I'll be sure to do it, because the updates always make the games better. Let's see if we can beat two Ratchet and Clank games in one day again. We just finished off Ratchet and Clank Q-Force, which is pretty short. Now we're going to do Ratchet and Clank Nexus, which, based upon the full game uh, YouTube videos that I always search up just to get a feel for how long the game is, I'm seeing 4 hours 40, 3 hours 30. And being as it's only 9pm here, I reckon we're beating this game today. Because you guys know that I will happily play until 4 o'clock in the morning, and if I do that at 7 hours and... If normal people are beating it in three and a half to four and a half, then, well, we, let, let's see. We, it might be a two and a half hour long game. You never know. But I'm so glad to be back in the main franchise now because the last few days of playing the spin-offs has made me want to throw my toys out the pram. <laughs> I've really lost my will. Like, All for One and Q-Force really did derail the franchise a little bit. Or a lot. So I'm glad that we're back into the main installments now. I'm even excited for the one after this, because after this one we're moving over to the PlayStation 4. For, well, I'll play it on PlayStation 5, but the Ratchet & Clank reimagining, remake, reboot, resequel, whatever, um, where 
apparently that doesn't have very good reviews, but it can't be as bad as Awful 1. Anyway, let's begin, shall we? You can really smell the budget that the Ratchet games are getting by now. I mean, this is still 11 years ago, but it's... I can just feel that there was more money put into this, especially because it started to do the thing that games kind of started to do around this time, where there was a lot more talking in gameplay segments. It, for, it, older games, a lot of the talking wasn't really done during like actual gameplay. It was during cutscenes only. Are we dead? What's going on? Hello? I don't seem to be allowed to do anything right now. Hello? What's happening? Hello? Can I... Can I play, please? I can't... I'm going to say, I know that I can do that. There we go. Um, what was I saying? Um, you can really feel the budget, because it's, it's it feels way more linear, and that was a thing that games just have done since. There's a lot more inter-gameplay talking, which I don't feel like was a very common thing until, like the mid-2010s or so, but this is still a 2013 game. This is still nearly 12 years old, which isn't just crazy. Like, by this point, Ratchet & Clank has been around for 11 years, because it came I think game one was 2002, and this is 2013, which is the difference between this game to now, where there's only been two more releases, which is kind of nuts when you think about it. It's crazy to think that in the time since Ratchet & Clank Into the Nexus, which is 11 years, there has only been two Ratchet & Clank games, and one of them was the remake, or reboot, resequel, reimagining, whatever. And that is the same gap between Ratchet & Clank 1 as Ratchet & Clank Nexus, which was 11 games. I I don't care what you said, I did the grab jump just there. Shut up. That, I definitely did the thing I was supposed to be doing, I don't care. But, yeah, that's... It seems weird to me, like, why... Has, why did the Ratchet... Well, actually, we know exactly why the Ratchet franchise went dormant. And it's Spider-Man's fault, isn't it? If Spider-Man came out about five years after this game, Insomniac's A-Team were definitely working on that for, for a long time prior to it releasing, you know? Whereas, uh... That'll explain why there wasn't one. Although, we've still got one in 2021, I think, was Rift Apart. Yeah, all this destruction, all this drama. Feel the budget. Absolutely feel the budget. Bro, what happened to the colour green in games? Like, compare the greens of Ratchet and Clank Nexus here to the greens of like Ratchet and Clank 1 through 3. Even on the same system, mine, so it's not even PS2 to PS3 really, it's the it's the PS3 remaster. The greens are just more vivid. It feels like as this franchise has gone on, well, except for Ratchet 4. Ratchet 4 was very dark, but it was dark intentionally. After that, it tried to return to the sort of more whimsical feel, but I feel like the colour just never came back the same way it did in the first three. I'm looking forward to doing my sort of retrospective thoughts on the entire franchise once I'm done, because I think... Spoiler alert, I guess, but I'm pretty sure that two and three were definitely my favourite. They kind of blend together in retrospect, like, thinking about them. Um, but two and three were definitely my favourite so far. There's still two more to go, so, you know, mood could, could be changed, but I doubt it at this point. Although, we are moving to the PlayStation 4 and 5 with the next entry, so it could get a hell of a lot prettier. You know, being as we are still technically playing an 11-year-old game. But 11 years aren't that long. A lot of very good, pretty games came out around this time frame. This might be the first sewer level in a Ratchet game since, like, Ratchet & Clank 3, where it had that whole collectathon in the sewers. That's kind of a surprise. That's, like, nearly 10 games or so without a Ratchet, without a uh, sewer level. That's impressive, considering, you know... The amount of sewer levels in every game that's ever been made, ever, ever. I feel like uh, sewer levels are definitely the most common of the level types. The caverns. You know, sewers in real life kind of interest me. It'd be interesting to, like, how big are they? Because I remember watching Ghostbusters and being like, are they really that big? And to be fair, with the amount of, like, you know, people that there are that shit every day, they've got to be decently big, aren't they? Like, log from a logical standpoint. Puzzle solving. Did I do that in the right order? I don't know if I did. I need to make sure I am. I did. Good. I'm surprised there was never any sort of portal gun implemented. I feel like a portal gun would fit in pretty well with the uh, Ratchet and Clank's universe. There's another piece of the Rhino. Not once have I had the Rhino in any of these games. I don't know what it does. Okay, what's that game that came out a while ago that was basically completely a silhouette? What was that? Was it Limbo? I feel like Limbo might have been the one. Was that before or after Ratchet & Clank Nexus? Because these sections where you play as Clank 
in full control of the, the gravity. That's very cool, by the way. I've never seen anything like this before, where not just up and down, up and down I've seen before, but like left and right, it's not just jumping, it's it's gravity control. It's pretty cool. Um, but it does remind me of that one game. I'm pretty sure it was Limbo. I bet speedrunners do this in crazy speed. Like, they just must. Like, I feel like if you were smooth here and you memorised the layout, you could zoom zoom. I didn't mean to get hit by that. It's fine. How do we... Ooh! Slithered under that door like a slippery little snake. Boom. Just going to take a quick break from playing Ratchet and Clank to have a chocolate easter egg my protein layered bar, as I said. Always use code KALE if you're using my protein. Send me screenshots of any orders you make over on KALEPT's Instagram because they give me a 200 quid voucher to give out to one of you guys that does each month. Ratchet and Clank Nexus finally brought something back from one of the older Ratchet games with the sort of kind of semi non-linearity of the missions being that like I just got halfway through this planet and it's like you need this gadget that you don't currently have, go somewhere else to go and get it. So I've got to go travel to another planet to go and complete a quest there to get the gadget to come back to this planet to get you. you get the gist. That was like the entirety of the first game and lots of the second and third game and not really any of them since. Although, yeah, 55% done through this planet. I think there is only five planets by the look of it. We're 97%, we, I don't know what the th remaining 3% was, I suppose it was the Platinum Bolts. But it looks like we're off to Planet Crag to participate in a tournament deadlocked style, hopefully. Deadlock was such a good game. Like, if I was to randomly play any of them, like, out of context, Deadlock would probably be one of them. Because it was just fun. Like, it was just silly, stupid fun. Or Gladiator, depending on where you're from, I suppose. I've been calling it Deadlock most of the time, even though I'm pretty sure that here is called Gladiator. Who knows? It's not even 11pm yet. Bro, we're gonna, we're gonna finish this game so early tonight. We can't really be about to head to the final planet of Ratchet & Clank Nexus, surely. Like, maybe they're going to send us back to other planets, but I, I doubt it. Although this says we've only done 18%, but it is also the one with the collectathon on, so maybe that's why. It just seems strange that there's just that much to do. Like, hang on, will it let me spell things? If only it stayed for longer, that would have been funny. Anyway, it looks like we're about to go and begin the last planet, maybe? Seems weird. Like, I know the game's supposed to only be like three hours or whatever. But, really? We only just got to that planet that I've just left. The planet before that took like an hour. It's not even midnight, bro. I mean, if we started at nine, that's two hours and 40 minutes ago. If it's supposed to be three and a half hours max, then yeah, I guess that would add up in terms of this being the last mission or the last planet or whatever. Cool, I suppose. Progress, yay. It's been good, I'm enjoying the game though. It's just short. Anybody remember that one room in Resident Evil 4, and therefore also the Resident Evil film? Good times. Every time I come across like a red laser grid, I just get flashbacks. Just infinite flashbacks. Interestingly, there's a... Hang on. Hang... Right. No. Sure. What is it? My brain says just go to the end of the hallway, because it's not exactly a difficult hallway to do. Although I did nearly just jet into that then. Hang on. Right. What are we doing here? Hello? Really? Is that it? There's the whole laser system though. I've done that in the wrong direction. Or we should just do it in the right direction automatically. Right. Come on, man. The puzzles in this game, compared to some of the other games, are hilariously simple. I know that it tried to get a little bit more complex with those with those tunnel things, but yeah, no. You know, there's been a lot more boss fights in this game than a few of the others, but none of them have really felt very boss-like. Like, a lot of these bosses have dropped fast. This one, not so much. And this is definitely the last level. I don't think it's the final boss, because there was no cutscene preceding it. But I'm going to film this just in case it is. Because this game's moving at such a breakneck pace that I have no idea. Wow, really? That was all my ammo for that gun? Okay. Well, to the next one. You have a lot more health than literally every other boss in the game. What is going on here? Why do you have so much health? Maybe you are the final boss. You belong in Saints Row, mate. Slightly different shade of purple. Back to that. 
We might be here a while. Every single boss in every single one of these Ratchet games has had a jump over its shockwave attack. Well, that's cool. Are we about to do some rifty stuff? Okay. I'm down with that. Let's go. Bro's charging a Godzilla laser. Did you hear that noise? Nope, nope, nope. Is he healing too? That is straight up the Godzilla noise. You know when Godzilla's losing a fight and then he just pulls out his other part of beam attack thing. I've got another one of these levels. Okay, hang on. These are pretty cool. Of the Clank levels through these games, these have been my favourite by far. There's been a lot of Clank levels that I didn't like. This is cool. I don't mind this. Oh, hang on. We need to use that. Bring that over here. Drop it up there. Sling it left. Sling it up here. Yeah. Go down. Sling it across. And that. Really? I'm going to say fall in tandem with me, bro. Oh, Christ. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Alright, try again. Okay, yeah, with how long this boss fight's been going on and the fact that it's been like four phases and none of the other boss fights in the game have done this, this is definitely the final boss. Have I just fallen to my... How have I fallen to my death when I'm upside down on a gravity platform? Oh yeah, this is definitely the final boss. H how far back is it going to put me? You better not put me far back or I will throw my... No, I won't. I will not throw my controller. If I were going to throw my controller, it would have been about three games ago. It's fine. Alright, come on then. I can't believe you fall off, considering... We're supposed to be mag-booted, especially when upside down. Alright. Less jumping then, I suppose. Or at least a little bit more controlled jumps. And we're out of ammo. This is pretty cool. You know how I was saying earlier on about how you can kind of feel the budget has increased? This is sort of evidence to that. I can't believe we're finishing this off and it's not even midnight. I'll have beaten two games in like eight hours, which is pretty cool. That's with going to the gym as well. Productivity. There's only going to be two Ratchet and Clank games left. I could theoretically put three hours into another one today, or I could get an early night and start earlier tomorrow, which is probably more likely because I didn't sleep too well yesterday and I could do the extra. Come on, bro. Let's be calling this a day now. This fight's been going on ages. Also, the games have finally become very easy, like, or at least the mainline ones. The, like, the last few mainline ones towards the end have been smooth sailing. Like, bro isn't, bro's not touching me, you know? Whereas Final Bosses and some of the other Ratchet games, I was livid. We done? You good? See you in a bit. Well, that was the end of Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus, which is our final, sadly. Our final PlayStation 3 Ratchet and Clank game. Let's get it put on the game log because after this we're moving over to the PlayStation 5 for Ratchet and Clank's remake and then Ratchet and Clank A Rift Apart. Only two more to go. I tell you, it's even though I think it's taken me longer to get through the Ratchet games versus the Spider Man games, it hasn't felt like it. I think it's because. Every, like, second Spider-Man game felt very different than the last, whereas most of the Ratchet & Clank games play the same besides All for One and Q-Force. So, like, you, you, it's, there's just not been that much separation between them. It's kind of kind of strange that way. Also, the, the, the lengths of these games vary so wildly that it's kind of insane there, too, because some of them are by, like, three days, some have been, like, 14 hours... 14 hours would take, like, two days, typically. Um, some of them, like today, I've been two in a day, start to finish. Anyway, that is Ratchet and Clank. I've just realised I put 2024 on uh, Q-Force. Somebody's going to comment about that. Let's get that fixed. Right, so that was Ratchet and Clank number 11 on the log on the 23rd. So, that brings us up to how many games this year, this month, and all that sort of thing, like I always do. 68 games this year so far. Not bad, considering I actually didn't play, like, anything for a, quite a while at one point, like, in terms of beating things. Like, if you check this out, Pokemon Emerald on the 26th of February, and then in March I did one and two different games in March, and then I did one, two, three, and four games in April, 
won two games in May, and then I started picking it back up again after that. So, like, for a couple of months there, I wasn't really playing much. So, yeah, how many games is that in July? I think there's now, I think I've now played more games in July than there have been days. Yeah, so, that was the 24th game for July, and we're only on the 23rd of July. Cool. I think I said March a minute ago. I'm tired. Anyway, it's only half past midnight, and I usually play until like four in the morning. So I've got an early night ahead of me. Hopefully I get up early tomorrow and we can uh, begin the remake. It's going to be interesting playing the remake pretty much eight or nine days after playing the first one. It's going to be cool to see how it's changed. There should be some pretty graphics because we're moving another generation ahead. I'm a miss playing the PlayStation 3 because the PS3 controller is my favourite controller of all time because it's basically the controller I grew up on because PS1, 2 and 3 all basically had the same controller. Ah oh dear. Good times. But yeah, how many how many Ratchet and Clank games is that now in the last, what, week? How many? Eight days. In eight days I've done 11 games. Cool. See you tomorrow. Well. Hello YouTube. We're just... I'm whispering to you guys now, because all the gameplay clips, most of you guys should be aware, go to, to TikTok as well. And uh, whenever I speak to the camera like this, I'm only speaking to YouTube, and it feels like I'm talking to my pals. Ah, oh, what a day. So, 12.30. I don't know how long this video was. I don't think this video was as long as a lot of the other ones often end up being. And there's only two more Ratchet & Clank games to go, and then it's on to the next thing. Doing Spider-Man and Ratchet & Clank back-to-back -back has been quite a large like, double franchise. Like, how many games is Spider-Man and Ratchet and & Clank back-to-back? -back? It's 25 games. No, 26 games in total, that. Just for two franchises. Christ. Anyway, I'm off to bed. Well, I'll probably be up a couple more hours, but bed earlier than normal. See you in a bit.